Welcome back to the shop, guys. My name's Adam, and we're working on another Saturday Night Special. This is episode 78, and I've got a lot to talk about this week. We've got another uh, action-packed episode here. Got a lot of different things, lots of different contact, uh, uh, content and subject matter here to talk about. And uh, we'll start right off with the, uh, the big elephant in the room, the K&T. And you see what's missing over here, don't you? All you guys that didn't think I was going to work on this, we finally started the work on the K&T, okay? So we've got some footage of that. I'm going to throw that in there for this, this uh, episode, and you're going to get to see what I've done with the Kearney and Trekker so far, all right? Uh, it is not fixed yet, I will tell you that, but you do have the footage of me removing this, and we've got to take it down there to the table and start doing some inspection. So we got that, and as that work progresses i'll continue to bring that for you to see okay uh, i am taking lots of video and lots of pictures to uh, for you guys to watch and also maybe to help others out there on the web uh, later on we might post some of these pictures up on a forum or something like that okay so we'll get to that and uh so i want to go ahead and just move on and, and give you guys another reminder that we have our shop light t-shirt still for sale uh, it's going to be ending on July the 16th, Thursday. So as you're watching this, you, you've got about another five or six days that uh, you can still reserve one. Again, prices start at $20. They range from $20 to $25, depending on what size shirt you want. And uh, I got a little, a little bit more of an update for you this week. I've had some guys ask me about quality. Uh, I actually like these shirts better than the ones I got from Teespring. Uh, this is Gildan, and for me, th this is my sample shirt, I'm wearing it here. I think it fits a little bit better than the other. I, I, I think I like it a little bit more. So, and again, we have the pockets, so we get a pocket tee, and just trying to have a uh, nice, successful campaign, campaign there, guys. So, it's over at tblaster.com. Again, I'll throw the link up there and show some pictures so that you'll see what to go to and I'll have a link there in the description down below the video you can just uh, click straight on that and it'll take you right to where you need to go okay so I just want to thank everybody that's given me support I really appreciate it um, I, <laughs> this uh, th these shirts is what help sh support this shop so hope you like it and uh, go check you out a shirt okay alright so uh, we've got we've got some more uh, viewer appreciation mail I'm going to show you this week. Uh, we've got some new tools, and uh, we've got a I've got a flea market tool that I picked up actually a few weeks ago, and uh, never did fit it into the other SNS. So we're going to show that this week because it was a neat little tool that I found, and we actually demonstrated how it worked. And uh, I want to throw that in there, so you're going to get to see a, a, a flea market find and actually test it and use it. Uh, I got a little clip from last weekend, 4th of July, for the barbecue. I did a little clip there. I have a lot of guys that do enjoy seeing the, uh, the outdoor barbecuing uh, clips from out there cooking, so I did a little segment for that. We're going to throw that in there, and uh, that's about it. I got a couple things here I'm going to show you. Uh, I thought I would go ahead and say that I have given... Uh, Jody over at Weldon Tips and Tricks, I give him a little support. I ordered his 4th of July special, so we've got the DVD right here and the uh, the two tick fingers, uh, the tick finger and the, the extra large tick finger. And he's still got these on sale. I don't know how much longer he's going to have these on sale, but uh, these were on sale, I think, for the, the kit was like uh, $55, $57 or something like that. So I've been wanting a tick finger. And I've been meaning to buy one for a while, and I just it slips my mind to ever do it. And then I seen him promoting this, and I said, I'm going to go ahead and get my TIG finger, and I went ahead and, and, and got the uh, Torch Lot package deal. So, Jody, I like the TIG finger, man. I can't wait to start using it. This is going to be extremely helpful in uh, my future welding projects there. So, we got that. And then uh, we got a, we got a couple of the tools I'll bring in and show you. Uh, that we got past couple of weeks, and hopefully you'll enjoy the episode, okay? 
All right, so we got some viewer appreciation mail that was sent in, and uh, this was given to us by uh, Rob Klein, and uh, he is from, let me see, it was uh, Campbell Hall, New York, and I uh, got a nice little mix of uh, just different things, and I wanted to point this out, the, uh, okay, to Rockwell. So he had emailed me and showed me a pic this picture on my email, and said that he found this on Craigslist, they're local to him, and I believe he paid $350 for it. And it's a Rockwell horizontal milling machine. So he picked that up and he was telling me that he's gonna be, uh, have he's gonna have this mill running before I have the K&T running. So you're probably right <laughs> there, Rob, but, uh, or Bob, I mean, I'm sorry. I, I think I called you Rob, it's at his, uh, Bob. All right, um, so Bob has sent me a couple things here. Uh, we got some welding uh, shields here, and we have some lumber crayon, some uh, red and yellow, okay? And we have a couple knives, <laughs> but actually this is pretty cool. I don't have any kind of knives like this out here in the shop, and I have seen where these could be useful cutting boxes and foam and things like that. So. Uh, we'll keep these out here and have some knives out here in the shop. Okay, might even be able to use those for the barbecue. All right, and got a cool magnet right there. These come in handy. This is from a scrap yard up there. AW Scrap, Wappingers Fall, New York. Wappingers, that's a weird name, but anyway, got a magnet right there that uh. Nice strong magnet too, man. And then this one is a uh, Cipriano towing. <laughs> Got a little flashlight right there, keychain. Pretty cool stuff. Okay. And then we got this uh, really nice big hand reamer. And this is uh, kind of an oddity. One and 13 30 seconds. But it appears to be new. It's still very sharp. In good shape right there. All right, and then the last thing is a nice stare it box right there. But, wah, wah, nothing in it, but he thought that I would like that and uh, maybe use that to pull a, a uh, practical, practical joke on somebody. Uh, but honestly, maybe somebody's got some of uh, the, uh, the calipers that belong in here. What is that? The, uh, Stare at number 120, I think it is. That this goes, that this goes in, or uh, that they go in. So, you've got a nice case there that uh, somebody can probably put to use. And uh, so that's it. Uh, thank you very much, Rob. Very nice tool, and we will put that with the collections, and and hopefully one day we'll get to put it to use. Okay. We had another very nice package from our friend Avi over at Noga Industries. And uh, he has sent me a few different tools right here to, uh, to try out here in the shop. We got some more uh, deburr tools. And uh, we, right here we have a, one of their new holded arms. And he sent a fresh catalog that uh, shows all of their new hold it products. Uh, this is specifically designed for uh, camera, video, and lighting and that kind of stuff. That's pretty cool. So we'll check that out. And uh, we've also got... A uh, cool it, I believe that's what it was. Mini cool. I'm, I'm sorry. We got the mini cool. So I've actually been wanting to try this thing out over on the mill. And uh, Stan over at Shade and HKW, he, he recently got one of these, and he hooked it up to his uh, surface grinder, and he showed how how he likes it and how it works. And so far, it's getting really good reviews. I believe this is the same unit that Tom Lipton uses on his milling machine. So I've been seeing everybody uh, use this system, or, or several of the guys use it, and th this is really nice right here. So we're going to try this out over on uh, my mill <coughs> and uh, give it a shot. So that's very cool right there. We also got a couple of the uh, gift from from Avi, and one is this really cool. This really cool watch, okay, and it's got the, it's got Noga 
on the face of the watch there. So this is made by Adi Watches. Let's see, I think that opens up like that. Yeah. And it's an Israeli company also, made in Israel. And very fine watch. Seems to be a very nice quality. And that's awesome. Avi, thank you very much for that. And uh, one of these, one of these eight gig uh, thumb drives that looks like one of their deeper handles. These actually come in handy whenever I'm, um, whenever I'm on the road and I do video outside of the shop here, I can uh, throw a video onto these right here. So thank you very much, Avi, for those. All right, so we got our uh, our mini cool system right here, and this is the uh, the holded arm, okay. And so I can mount this to one of the mag bases right here, and then this I believe this is going to be a standard quarter quarter twenty thread, which is uh, kind of like industry standard for uh, cameras, uh, you know, like tripod mounts and cameras and all kind of things like that. So. Yeah, what this is right here, this is like a uh, like a jam nut. So you, you screw this onto your camera, and then you can jam it with this. It's got a really nice rubbery piece in there. It's molded. It's got the end for the Noga on it, and their uh, their tightening arm is uh, it's not a, a thumb wheel like on your indicator holders. Uh, this one is just more of your uh, your straight handle style, but you can adjust it where you want it. But it has the same feel, quality, and build as the standard Noga arms for the indicator holders. All right, so that's pretty cool. We'll have to uh, try to incorporate this in our video making, okay? So, and then we've got several uh, different scraping tools and deburr tools right here. I'll, uh, I'll quickly pull these out and show you which ones we got. They're for different things. I told them that uh, I didn't have any of the ones uh, specific for plastics. And I had been looking at those and was wanting to try some for the plastic. Uh, now this one right here is going to be the DB5000. Okay, that's got a ceramic V-blade in there. And this one, ceramic double burr right here. All right, it looks like they're, they're cutting the corner of a piece of UHMW. All right, I've got some UHMW down here. So we've got some pieces like that we want to deburr. Do the corners just like so. Nice. That works good. That works very good. Cool. Okay. So, again, that one is the DB5000. All right. We've got, now we've got another one here that's uh, similar to that, but this one is for steel. This is the DB1000. Now, this one actually has the two rollers on the end, and this one is for sheet metal in that configuration, or you can take, take them off and install one in the center hole there, and then it positions it so that you can put it on the center, or I'm, in, I'm sorry, the corner of a block like this, when you move that, and you can drag it, and you can deburr that, just the corner there. And the configure that it's in right now, you can take a piece of sheet metal. Now, this is some aluminum right here. But you can take this and, okay, you drag it down a piece of sheet metal and you can deburr it right there. All right. All right, we got this guy. Uh, I think this was boxed separately. We got a nice little scraper right there, man. All right, we got one of the scrapers. This is adjustable. Position it where you want it. Okay. All right, we've got a, a CR2300. All right, now this is gonna be one of the, uh, the ceramic tools. Go ahead and pull it out here. This is another one of the ceramic deburr tools. It's for plastics, soft plastics. And Put my glasses on because if I don't, I know some of you guys are going to murder me for it. So I just grabbed this piece from over there by the by the wall. So all right, so you can take that and 
deeper holes. So that works pretty good. I'll have to keep playing with that, but all right. Okay. And we've got an NC5200. All right, now this is <clears throat> this is also one of your ceramics. And it rolls around like that. NC5200, and this one is ideal for deburring hard abrasive plastics. Okay? All right, and we got one more. We got one more here. All right, now this one is the RC2000. And how this one works right here, you have a uh, little triangle blade at the end. And this is made for deburring the inside of small holes. So you stick it through the hole. If you want to get to the back side, you know, you don't have no way to really deburr that, but you can use this tool here. So you can turn your blade that way, stick it up in the hole, and then you can push a little plunger on the end. All right, it's got a little rod there that pushes the blade, and then you kind of pull on it, and then you're pulling against the hole, and then you turn it, and then you can deburr the back side of the hole right there, okay? Then you can push it in to uh, straighten the blade back out, and then pull it out of the hole. So that's pretty neat right there. It's got a little, there's a little needle type plunger deal that's push, that's going up and pushing that. So that's a pretty neat little, I could have used this a lot of times whenever you you, you want to deburr. If you if you got a part that you got to drill a hole down the center and you know it's way up inside there, you really don't have a way to get in there and clean that hole up really well. But sometimes you can take a, a tool like this if you got one and go in there and, and do a deburr. Okay, especially on a flat surface right there. All right, so there's our uh, there's our deburrs. We've also got this kit here, and I didn't I, I didn't see that in the catalog. This is an FT three thousand, and I believe this is a very miniature uh, deburr kit right there. You can see how how small that blade profile is. Okay, very very small. And then this other one here kind of tells the tail also. It's one of the little, one of those for deburring a hole, uh, chamfering a hole, and it's very small, very tiny. So this, this kit right here is intended for some small holes. <clears throat> All right, and then we got the, uh, got the little scraper there also. Awesome tools, man. Nice, nice tools for the collection here, uh, and they and they will be put to use. I'm really excited about these ceramic tools and uh, deburring these uh, these plastic parts. So that'll come in handy right there, man. Remember, we got some plastic that we're we're uh, machining. We've got the one that we can scrape the edges with, and then we got some holes that we drill. We got a couple different flavors of ceramics to uh, go in there and deburr the plastic. So, all right. And then, of course, he threw in some fresh catalogs right here of all the all the stuff. So, got the cool watch there and the thumb drive. Uh, thank you very much, Avi. Uh, really, really appreciate this stuff. It'll, it'll be well used around here. I'm looking forward to the jobs that we can actually show these these products in action and uh, see just how well they work, okay? Uh, so again, thank you very much, all you guys over there at Noga Industries. Man, you guys are awesome. <laughs> so this is a, a recent tool acquisition for me. It's something that I was actually pretty excited to get. Uh, I've kind of talked about this in the past in other videos. And I, I, I always have wanted one of these little four inch stair at levels, so I finally got me one. I found this online. It was on uh, one of the uh, machinist tool buy, sell, and trade on uh, Facebook. Uh, and there was a guy that had a whole list of things. And uh, I seen this. Uh, he had this level on there, and he was looking for offers. And so I, I sent him an offer, and we made a deal. And I'm now the owner of this little uh, vintage 
steer it four inch level. And it is in very clean condition. It is the older type that's got just the, uh, the radius uh, machined into the bottom. The newer style actually has like an involute style groove. And I believe the newer ones are uh, satin chrome finish versus the, uh, the this old chrome finish right here. But it's been well taken care of. Uh, it does have a name on the side. It's hard for me to pronounce that last name. I'm going to attempt it though. It's Bob Cresselius. So uh, anybody know Bob Cresselius? Uh, it would come from up north. I, I don't recall the state now. So that was his level, and he had a lot of really nice, clean machinist tools. So this is the box that that it came with right here. Very nice little box. They got a little oily rag down in the bottom there to help keep it from rusting. So I'm assuming this is a homemade or you know like a shop made box that was specifically made for this level. I don't I don't know if this was stared. I don't think it is. It looks more homemade. So. That's my little uh, machinist tool purchase of the week right there. We got our, our uh, number 98 uh, four inch steer at level. What's up guys? We're gonna do a flea market segment here. I just got back from the flea market and I found a couple antique tools out there today. And I was able to get them for a really good price so I, so I grabbed them up uh, for a couple different reasons. One is that I've never seen them before, never got to use them, and they both look like they're in great shape. And two, I think that uh, these make, these may, uh, especially this one here, might make a good uh, contribution to uh, possibly David Richards' uh, steam-powered shop. I think this is going to be uh, kind of an authentic tool for his time period of the machine shop there. So if not, I'll, I'll hold on to it around here. But... <clears throat> A couple of little things I grab is a nice file card and a uh, and a pretty nice die stock handle right here. So we got this, this is all from the same gentleman. So this one I'm not going to really delve into too much, but I'm going to share it with you. It is an old antique tool, and what I find really interesting about it, I can tell by the tag right here. It's got a nice bright brass tag, and I'll take a picture so you, you can see it. But it says the Toledo number one and manufactured by the Toledo Pipe Threading Machine Company. And number A2316. So it's a pipe threader. And I think the way that this works, you see this, this part turns, you have a bushing that goes into here once you remove these thumb screws. You pull those all the way, you back those all the way out and this bushing comes out. And you see I've got a couple more sets here, uh, bushing and dies. So I believe this is a bushing, and what you do is you back this all the way out, you unscrew it. Right about there, it's got these four alignment pins. Keep everything square. Slide it up on the pipe, tighten the three thumb screws, and then your pipe will be uh, right up there against your, your dies, and then you start threading it. And this is gonna go on. You keep screwing it, and it'll cut actually It'll come to a stopping point, so I don't know if you do the whole range, but I'm assuming that you that you uh, run it all the way up to the full range, and then it'll stop. And then that's probably going to be your proper uh, your proper cut on the end of the pipe. So that was pretty neat. Uh, it looks like a very old tool. It is missing the two handles, but those could be easily made. They're usually just pipe. Okay, so there's that one there. But I found this one, and this one I thought was really neat right here, man. I could just, as soon as I picked it up, I could tell we had something that was built of really nice quality. So what this is, is a pipe cutter, okay? And this was manufactured by, and it says, the number five improved beaver square and pipe cutter, steel frame. Manufactured by the Borden Company, Warren, Ohio, USA. And it's got the beaver trademark. US patent October 1st, 1912, and also October 22nd, 1918. So I thought that was awesome and a good score. So 
what I figured out that this is a pipe cutter, okay? I know most of you guys are familiar with a standard, like a rigid type of uh, little pipe cutter. It's got the little blade and you screw it on there and you tighten it up and run it around the pipe and it cuts it off. This is essentially the same thing, except what it uses is these two blades here. And they're made just like a parting blade on, you know, for a lathe. And I've already played with it for just a little bit. I scotch sprayed this so I could read this good. And I made one test cut on it. And it seems to be the way that it's made is it's either right or left hand. You can spin it either direction. And either direction you spin it is going to cut. Okay? So I don't know which way is the correct way. I, I was trying right-handed. And I tried left-handed. And they cut both directions. So on the back you can see you've got the V-jaws in here. So these are spring-loaded. Once you put it up on your pipe, you tighten it up and it pushes these blades back and that's what it creates your tool pressure. And you just tighten it on up to the V's there, put some oil on it and you start spinning it. So what I thought we could do is let's go give it a test. All right, I got a piece of pipe over there. I think it's some three quarter pipe. And I'm even gonna break out my little rigid yoke vise and we're gonna cut us a piece of pipe off of this thing, okay? So this is the vise that I'm going to use. This is a rigid yoke vise. Man, I've had this thing for years and years, and I've actually only used it just a handful of times. I bought this thing when I was a teenager at a yard sale. I was going to show you how it was made. I've never cleaned it up. It's really nice. You can clamp it to a table using the built-in C-clamp there, or you could bolt it down if you want to. So I'm just going to slide it up on the edge of the table, <clears throat> give it a pull, and there's the pipe we're going to use right here. Okay, all right, make sure you can see it good. So, like I said, you slide it on. You gotta open it up. You go on there so far, and then you, you screw it closed. And those blades, let me grab it so you can see it. Got you at the wrong angle. closing them up. I'm going to close it up until it fits around the pipe good. So they're pulled up on the, uh, the pipe there. I'll go ahead and put a little bit of cutting oil here. So it's this one here pulling the chip over. So you don't have to keep tightening it like the, the normal style that you usually use. That spring tension is keeping the blades tight. So like I said, I believe it's right or left hand because see you can go this way. Let's see. <clears throat> and then this side's going to cut, see? So, <laughs> that's how you're going to do it in the field, or that's how they did it in the old days when you didn't have your power tools around. So, you can use that to cut it off, and you come back in with your uh, pipe threader and thread it. So, 
that's a, I think that's a pretty neat tool right there. So I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to give a mention to David Richards and his uh, steam powered machine shop and he likes to keep all his tools authentic. So David, if you think this is something that's authentic for your shop and you would like to have this and use it, let me know and I'll be glad to send it to you and donate it to the cause. Okay, man.